Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It is 1.04 p.m. Uh, September 20th, regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. Um, today, we have about eight items uh, on our posted agenda. Um, and I have a couple of requests just for, uh, or, or, sorry, <laughs> item arrangement. Uh, just to bump number two with the LDG uh, development presentation to number one. Um, another item I just wanted to point out, I think um, that we had a couple misspellings and uh, I probably, it was probably my fault, the reference to the House Bill 1271 was published as 1272. Can't seem to get that out of my head. Um, and uh, item four, the Tourism Panel Miles Media Contract. Um, and I also wondered, commissioners, if you want to bump the joint discussion with the city on ARP requests um, to the last thing on the agenda um, as a kind of longer discussion item. But I think my biggest one is bumping number two to uh, first in line. And uh, if you either of you have any other corrections. Commissioner Much, this is uh, Commissioner Marcella. I would request that we move um, the agenda item with uh, Nodel Parks easement, if we can bump that to tomorrow at 1 p.m. Okay. Please. Okay. That's all fine with me. All right. Um, all right, very good. I will, let me just rearrange this a little bit so I can copy and then paste in the chat. And we should be good to go. Um, all right, thanks for your patience on that. Okay, so with those suggestions, I have first the LDG development presentation, second the agreement with SCED um, for professional services, uh, third the presentation from SCED on the DOLA grant, um, and then our consideration of the re resolution regarding um, the grant application. Fourth, tourism panel, Miles Media Contract. Fifth, the resolution for parks replacement fund. Sixth, the transit feasibility study contract. And seventh, the joint discussion with the city on ARP uh, requests. That sounds good to me. All right, great. I will entertain a motion for approval of those adjustments. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? No, thank you. No, thanks. All right, all those in favor, aye. 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 Great. Okay, um, we'll move into uh, community informational items then. Commissioner Marcel, do you have anything for us today? Um, no, we had a really great turnout uh, this weekend at the airport fly-in pancake breakfast um, and want to extend a huge thank you to um, Josh and Josh <laughs> at the airport. Um, and Michael Irwin and Mabel Bogart for uh, so generously giving up their time to help with that with that breakfast. Um, they are truly rock stars, and we wouldn't be able to do it without uh, their dedication. So thank you, thank you guys so much for your help. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else. Thanks. Yeah, that was fun, Commissioner Fiedler. Um, I might just uh, let people know. I think um, there was an editorial in the. Herald Democrat about this, but the Colorado state redistricting is sort of underway and there's still a chance for people to weigh in on that. So I encourage people to do that. It makes a difference both for our federal US delegation as well as our state um, House and Senate reps. And for, um, did wanna make a plug? I think so, some of the preliminary or, or working draft maps, particularly the federal congressional delegation and the state house map split us apart from parts of Summit and Eagle and Chafee, depending on which iterations you look at. And 
I think it's in our interest as a community, just given the workforce and transportation and sort of housing in a relationship. So it's in our interest as Lake County to be in the same uh, state house district and uh, US congressional district um, as our neighboring uh, uh, counties of Summit, Eagle, and Cape. So put a plug in for that. Thanks. Um, I, I'll just mention uh, on September 30th, the uh, NRD Natural Resource Disaster Trustees have a meeting to review uh, a couple of the proposals that we got on um, continuing work, one from the county and partners continuing work that's uh, gone on, on river restoration and mine um, mitigation, uh, as well as forest and fuel mitigation um, and some culvert replacement planning. Um, so that's looking forward to continued development of uh, how the trustees want to continue to spend some of the um, Sarco uh, uh, settlement dollars here in the county. Um, all right, uh, if there's nothing else on community informational items, uh, I'll ask for any commissioner clarifications. I have none. None for me either, thank you. Uh, none for me. All right, and now for public comments on items not on the agenda, uh, we ask that you keep that to three minutes. And if you are able to raise your hand, uh, go for it. Otherwise, um, turn on your video and, and uh, get our attention. But I see Jamie Cipher, you raised your hand. Go ahead, Jamie. Thank you, Commissioner Mudge. Uh, my name is Jamie Cipher. I live at 1300 Harrison Ave. Uh, I'm here today to address exactly what I addressed at this meeting two weeks ago, which is that the election information on our county's website is sorely out of date. Um, the election is only getting closer. I just got my blue book in the mail a couple of days ago. I know there were some changes made to the website, um, you know, system wide, and I would hope that those changes would make it even easier to update our public information as it regards elections. I think we, the citizens, deserve to have accurate and up-to-date public information. There's not just stuff from last year. There's a sample ballot from 2016. Um, and I would just respectfully ask that we update that as soon as possible with the election coming up in much less than two months. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, any other public comment? Colleen Nielsen, do you are you here to give us a an update? Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much. So I'm Colleen Nielsen. I'm the director of public health here for Lake County. And as we know, we continue to have COVID in our community. We continue to message about the need for vaccinations for folks as our pathway to normal, so to speak. We continue to communicate and dispel myths that are out there. We also um, are encouraging testing if you have been exposed to someone with COVID and or you are sick and you don't know what it is. And we are working closely with all of our partners, um, St. Vincent Health specifically, you know, to be able to provide those vaccinations and St. Vincent Health does have the ability to test at both the hospital as well as at the St. Vincent Family Health Center. I think the um, other piece is that we are, um, Looking at right now, our vaccination status is about 61%. And like I said, we're just trying to encourage folks to get out there. And, um, and even if you received your first dose, let's get, your, get you in here for your second dose. If you have some questions and hesitations around that, please reach out to our nursing staff at nurses at co.lake.co.us. And they'll be able to answer your questions and hopefully set you up for a second dose. So that would be really great. The new latest and greatest is a lot of conversation around what is being called boosters at this point in time. Right now we are um, clear to do a third dose for those folks that are immunocompromised. And so if you feel that you are fall into that category, we have the ability to do a third dose for those folks. The Federal Drug Administration met on Friday to talk about what that a third dose, what that might look like kind of across the board for those folks who already are fully vaccinated. They currently are only discussing Pfizer, not Moderna. The recommendation came out that they would encourage a third dose with Pfizer for those who are 65 and up. They might also include healthcare and teachers 
um, in that category. We don't know what that looks like or what that direction might take here. But I think we just have to be mindful that we're only talking about Pfizer. So for example, if you've gotten Moderna, you might fall into that category. You don't have the ability to now have a Pfizer dose. I think that's important to note. And the other piece is the advisory um, um, Council on Immunization Practices is meeting this week to kind of formalize what those recommendations might look like and what that rollout might look like. Um, as you can imagine, a majority of our doses that we gave here in our county were um, Moderna. And so we recognize that a lot of folks did receive Pfizer outside of our county, and we do have the ability to give both as we continue to see what happens this week as far as those recommendations for what um, the Advisory um, Council on Immunization Practices of what our rollout might look like. So stay posted. We did push that out on Friday to see that we are monitoring the situation. Met with St. Vincent earlier today to kind of talk about you know, what we can or can't do. So thank you. Any questions? I don't have any questions for you, Colleen. Thank you. Um, Colleen, I, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, I'm wondering if you could share with us kind of a, <clears throat> a little bit of case count that we're currently experiencing and see if, uh, are we experiencing a, a spike in cases? Um, and what, estimated percentage is of Delta variant in the cases that we're seeing right now, if you have any yeah. of that. Sorry, I know that's kind of on the fly and that's a big question, so if you. No, that's okay. I, uh, I am obviously, I have my um, screen up so I can pull up the latest. And so as far as I'll answer your Delta, Delta question. So right now in the state, almost 100% of uh, cases that are being sequenced, meaning that they're grabbing them from labs all across the state are all Delta. So truly Delta is the strain that we are seeing, you know, here um, in Colorado. You know, they have pulled some of our cases um, from Lake and we did have Delta here as well. So I don't think that's a big surprise in the scheme of it all. And um, as far as um, looking at our latest, and so this data is current as of 918, so two days ago. So as far as a uh, positivity rate, this is a one week average. We're at 9.38%. And if you guys remember the dial system, that would put us in orange. But as you know, we have no um, restrictions in place at this point in time. And then as far as incident rate, which is a little bit more forgiving, you know, we've had four total new cases in the past week. What we continue to see though is in our cases is that it kind of hits um, a population of unvaccinated folks that are living together, either family members and or uh, friends. And that's why sometimes we get that quick spike of five to six cases in one day because it hit a family unit and or um, a friend unit that's unvaccinated. Did I catch it all? Yeah, I think that's great. Thank you okay. so much. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have any other questions. All right, thanks for being here, Colleen. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. All right, any other public comment on the items not on the agenda? I'm going to try to recopy um, the agenda that I put in the chat for those who are joining again. I don't see any new hands up. All right, seeing no other comments um, from the public on items not on the agenda, we'll move into new business. Uh, first on our uh, items of new business, we have an LDG development presentation, and I see Chase Kane here. Um, not sure. Hi, Chase. I know Chase came to speak with uh, Building and Land Use staff um, and kind of give a, an intro to um, it, what it is you do. Um, do you want to jump in and introduce yourself for us? Chase? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mudge. Uh, my name is Chase Kane. As, as said, I'm with LDG Development, and today I'm here to talk to you all about leveraging public and private partnerships to build new construction affordable housing in the community and also maintain that affordability in the long term. Um, as you all know, it's no secret that Lake County is no longer a secret to the once resort-dominated uh, areas in, in the central mountains of Colorado. Um, a lot of the growth around the county, such as Summit County, Eagle County, and even those uh, 
naturally occurring workforce communities like Silverthorne and Dillon are seeing an intense rise in their housing costs and uh, just barriers to retaining and, and attracting workforce. Uh, and that is making its way quickly uh, down the highway to Leadville. And uh, we're very aware of that. And we want to talk about how public and private partnerships, how we typically see the benefits of these throughout the community to provide affordable housing for, for the workforce and really just stimulate the local economy. Um, I do have about eight slides, uh, seven slides actually, that I'll go through with you all quickly just to give you a little reference. Uh, but before I do that, I, I heard this quote recently and I wanted to share it with you all because I think it's a very, very applicable to what we are doing. Me as an affordable housing advocate and you all um, thinking about the future of your community. And that is people change because they are inspired to change. But we can only inspire them by being the example and, and sending the invitation. So first, I want to thank you all for inviting me here to uh, discuss this and know that uh, it really will go a long way with your community, um, whether it be you know, anything we can work out um, with LDG or long-term partnerships throughout your community. So with that being said, uh, I will share my screen and go over some slides really quick. Sorry about this. I have to authorize the recording of my screen. We can see that. Can you see my screen now? We, yeah, we can. Okay. See, do you see page one? Sorry, I can't. We do. We see new construction housing. We see the the title page there. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, again, LDG Development. Uh, my name is Chase Kane, and uh, I, I'm the development manager for the state of Colorado for LDG. Uh, quick synopsis of who LDG is, how long we've been in the affordable housing and tax credit development. Uh, we are 25 years experience and primarily that's in light tech developments, meaning uh, tax credits and a lot of times tax exempt bonds. We have experience in 4% and 9% tax credits. In our portfolio, we have over 19,000 units. Uh, we have built all of those uh, or sourced, built, and still manage all of our um, all of our units. So we are a long-term community partner in any communities that we go into. Uh, we don't we don't refinance after stabilization and flip it to a market rate developer. And we also don't uh, try to refinance and sell uh, our assets at year fifteen when the tax credit. Uh, when the tax credit period ends, we we convert that and we maintain the affordability for as long as we can because we understand that everyone deserves a quality place to live. Uh, our principals are owned by two two gentlemen and out of Louisville, Kentucky, but they uh, started LDG with the with the mantra that everyone deserves a quality place to live, and and they stand behind that to this day, and which is why we hold all of our units uh, to date. Our portfolio is diverse. Uh, about 90% of our portfolio is affordable housing. So that provides uh, rent restricted units to individuals who earn up to 60% of the average median income of the area. Uh, we have workforce units in our portfolio for up to 120% AMI. Uh, we are very well versed in section eight and project-based vouchers. Uh, we have a lot of those scattered throughout a, almost every development I've worked in, uh, but a, a lot in the um, just across our portfolio as well. Senior housing um, and market rate. We do use seen, we do use some tax credits on our senior housing, and those uh, are rent restricted units, and 
they are also age restricted units. And we also have um, some market rate units scattered across our portfolio as well, because we understand the need or the benefits of having a mixed income community all the way from section eight to market rate. Um, and now that's kind of the shift that a lot of the housing studies are coming up with now. And, and we see that, um, that benefit in a tangible way. And it's really cool. Uh, so again, like I'm, the reason why I'm here is to talk about public and private partnerships. And I, no, I don't want to go into the pain or the, um, the housing crisis that you all know is happening right now. You see it with your eyes, you're, you're members of the community, you see it when you go out to eat and, uh, or, you know, when you try to go out to eat and the restaurant you normally go to isn't fully staffed and you have to wait a long time. So things that cause that um, on an economic level, we believe that a lot of it starts with housing. And uh, so the low inventory of housing in Lake County is, um, is pretty prevalent. Uh, there seems to be in the past, you know, I, I know that there, the rail yards are, are coming online, but the lack of affordable housing and units built specifically to be deed restricted uh, are, not, are not prevalent in the area. And a lot of the, uh, we call it naturally occurring affordable housing, uh, and not to be confused with a blighted or community at all. It's just houses that um, were built <clears throat> years ago that would uh, be available for workers either coming into the market or being able to save up enough to, to rent those. So, and a lot of those units seem to be getting taken up by folks with wanting a second home or short-term rentals, as I'm sure you guys are, are you all are familiar with. Um, I read where 74% of Lake County workers commute to other counties. Um, not only is that a burden on quality of life, it could potentially be a, a safety hazard in the winters uh, going over several of the passes and, and whatnot wherever uh, folks are working. Uh, I've heard up to an hour, you know, commute at the, uh, or not up to a minimum or hour commute just to get to Eagle or to get to Summit County. Uh, and then, like I said, as you all know, the pressure from the outside counties funnel into Le to Lake County and Leadville and increases the housing or the construction cost, which directly correlates with the housing cost. And the problem with that puts downward pressure on the local businesses because they can't raise their wages to accommodate these new, new rents, higher rents, high, higher mortgage, or mortgage costs, and um, which leads to unfilled positions in retail and uh, just the service injury in general, high turnover, high training costs, lost productivity, um, et cetera. The list, the list goes on. This is a complex problem. There's, there's no one that's really not affected here. Um, but what ways that we can try to add it best we can, like I said, it's a comp complex problem that has a lot of complex solutions. But once you, once we can get a grasp on the increasing housing cost and rental cost, uh, the local economy benefits from it greatly just as a just to keep a vibrant small business community that brings together the community and, and its participation, such as working and just just everyday life, going to eat, going into, uh, you know, the mom and pop shops that we all love to shop at. Uh, like I said, participation from local workers and uh, housing can really be a vehicle for building wealth and not just wealth for you, but generational wealth. Uh, we accumulate equity and really can provide a financially stable life for workers um, across the income spectrum from those who make less than 30% AMI up to those in the, mi the missing middle is what it's being called. And those, those are the folks up to 120% AMI because they no longer qualify for affordable housing, yet they work them, their way and graduated to the middle class, but they they can't afford the, or they're not, they don't qualify for affordable housing and then they can't afford the luxury market rate housings that are coming online. Uh, connectability, enhancing walkability, it's one of our huge uh, pushes in any development that we do. 
Uh, infrastructure improvements such as utilities, roads, and sidewalks are always part of our scope. Um, we try to work with the community as much as possible as far as input and really what, what the community wants and needs. And, and a lot of times it is uh, the utilities, roads, sidewalks, and just the walkability. And then there's an old adage in development world or real estate world, it's uh, rooftops bring retail. Uh, and I understand that everybody wants to have their community the new latest and greatest place, but rooftops bring local coffee shops. It brings, uh, a lot of times it'll bring financing for small businesses that weren't uh, available previously in the area. Um, as populations grow, they, you know, a lot of times states will want to funnel some money into those communities. Are there any, so I've I feel like I've talked a lot, but if there are any burning questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And, uh, and uh, I will be happy to clarify any of the, um, any of the lingo that I use that may not be uh, used every day. So please ask me if, if, if needed. Hey, so I have one quick question you made me think of with uh, regarding senior housing development. Um, do you all, do you all ever um, acquire uh, existing properties and manage? Um, no, not typically, because okay. we are a new build uh, developer. I'm, transparently, we do, what we have done, though, are uh, built units for, uh, you know, maybe uh, existing units that need to be rehabilitated or at least re tore down or rebuilt. And then we will build the units and then place them in those units so they're not displaced, if that makes sense. Um, but we don't typically take over existing uh, developments or communities um, as a just a general. Um, this is a slide on different tools to. Um, sorry, Commissioner, much did that answer your question or? Yep. Okay. Thank okay. you. No problem. Uh, so here are some tools that we have used to as a vehicle to provide affordable housing, uh, quality housing uh, quickly and as thoughtfully as possible. Um, these are, I, I divvied them up into two different categories, which would be incentives. And that is something that, uh, that the community and the, the city council and county commissioners would uh, be able to help us with. Um, which would be a density bonus, meaning an increased uh, density as far as where it was zoned for, just to get that number uh, of affordable house or really reduce the deficit of affordable housing. I think I saw where it's almost 600 units right now in Leadville. Uh, there's a deficit of 600 units in Leadville. Um, and so anyway, density bonus, a streamlined fast track uh, entitlement process. That's huge as far as rezoning goes, because those can take up to a year. So if I, if we were talking about a site-specific project now, uh, we would have to start the rezoning process. And a lot of times that can take from eight to nine months. And so that is eight to nine months of uh, folks still commuting, still looking for housing, still getting cost burden. Uh, different fee waivers, uh, parking variances, I know there are avenues for infrastructure funds such as TIF districts and Metro districts. Um, so, and then moving over to the more partnership side of, uh, of this is land donation. Um, we work a lot with housing authorities and, and just different um, jurisdictions who, who own land and uh, we enter into a ground lease. Uh, we are very versed in doing that. Uh, Along with that is a property tax abatement that helps us, that helps our pencil our financing a little bit better in the front end so that we can, um, we can be quick to market with, with these. Uh, and then housing reserve for local employees and then housing reserve for major employers. They, uh, you know, it, that, is, that is in direct partnership with the county or the city on what exactly is needed there, but uh, there are some different ways that we could uh, deed restrict the units of, of any complex. 
there are some photos here. Uh, these are these are our these are our apartments. Uh, I'll quickly just run through the highlights, and it's granite countertops. And we do have large units because we want families to live here and be able to feel like home. Our one bedroom start out at 850 square feet, and our three bedrooms go up to 1350. So uh, they are large, spacious kitchens, stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, LVT flooring, um, lug the luxury vinyl flooring, not the typical uh, LVT. But uh, so LDG, this is just an example of what we do in, in other communities. Um, provide quality housing for workers across the income spectrum. Like I said, 30% to 120% AMI. And we like the life, we like to, we're getting into the life cycle housing. We haven't done a huge master plan community, but if so, if the opportunity arise, we would definitely be happy to include uh, affordable uh, senior housing, market rate, single family, um, just to have for community members to spend their career and life cycle in the same community. Uh, we, we as a developer, uh, take on a lot of the risk and a lot of the uh, heavy lifting, I'll call it, to get uh, developments like this across the finish line. So we spearhead the community efforts. We spearhead entitlement and rezoning efforts. Um, we, we work with local engineering firms to produce all of our drawings. And uh, then we, of course, have to secure the funding for construction and mortgage or construction loan and then our mortgage. Uh, and typically we do that through tax credits and bonds, other sources of soft funding, subordinate loans think that are granted by the state. And then there are certain avenues uh, that we can tap into locally. Um, we, we professionally, well, we, we use a third party management, local third party management company that we contract with for the long-term. Like I said, we're a long-term partner of any community that we're in. So, and we still manage all of them and are the first point of contact if anything goes wrong. Um, we provide a lot of supportive services to our residents. Uh, we are working to expand this list, but right now it is, we provide flu vac vaccinations, financial planning seminars, computer courses, after school activities, tutoring, and we just, uh, we're rolling out a, new program in Kentucky where we are partnering with Norris Healthcare and they are the largest healthcare company in uh, Kentucky and they are actually going to start providing supportive services to all of our units across our portfolio and I think like they'll travel there with um, like a bus or a trailer and you know once a quarter they will be able to provide uh, you know nurses there for checkups and things like that and then the big one that I know a lot of uh, the financial folks out there like is we do assume all of the risk as far as being the guarantor. Um, we do, we would, I mean, that's it. <laughs> we, 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 we pay for everything up front, um, construction plans, entitlement work, rezoning, all those fees come from us or all those fees are paid by us. And we see it, we see it through until, um, until the buildings, start deteriorating, which aren't, aren't very soon because we do build quality, quality work. So uh, anyway. Next steps, uh, there was a letter of support floating around that I sent over to uh, Director Clarkson and, uh, and Anne. Please review that. Let me know if there's anything that needs to, um, that you'd like to see differently maybe, but this is a big step for us as far as taking it to um, whoever would start, whoever would do the rezoning. And then more specifically, the Chaffa or the, the LIHTC and bond allocators. Uh, they really like to see this to know that there is some type of vehicle in motion and, um, and, and that really just kind of jump starts and catalyzes a project or at least involvement in seeking um, land and financing. Uh, site analysis, which would be identify potential sites uh, in Lake County and Leadville. Um, and then we would start community engagement and 
doing environmental work, uh, rezoning and entitlements. And then we would try to apply for tax credits and bonds, which at this point, if we had a site ready to go or ready to go, had a site picked out in mind, then we would have to, we would apply in 2022, just as uh, CHAPA's tax credit and bond um, application cycle is. So, and that's it. Um, I know that there was a lot of information, so I would love to answer questions. I hope I explained everything well enough, but if not, please don't, please don't hesitate to ask me to uh, explain anything else that may have uh, been overlooked or uh, just casually talked through. But um, I will stop there and uh, see if anybody has questions. Thanks, Chase. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Chase? I had, a, I had a question. I was wondering um, if you could talk a little bit more about how that um, sounded like there were opportunities for uh, rental units, but also um, full ownership. Wondering if you could talk about more about how that gets mixed in. Is that all within one one single development, or yeah, just talk more about about those different options that would come in with a project like this? Sure. Uh, the way it would work is we would subdivide each uh, each a plot for a single family home. And then uh, you'd uh, we would have already applied for tax credits for those developments, which would make the cost uh, less, if that makes sense. So we it would be phase, any, any project would be phased like this, but uh, there would be a single family, which would be the home, more the home ownership uh, side of it. We could do also. We could also do townhomes uh, for sale. Also, that can be subdivided and sold. And then we we typically uh, only do rental uh, multifamily. Um, they, yeah. Do you, sorry, do you have any more specific question or just kind of how how that would work? Uh, with no, the I think I, I guess I, that was a good play. I guess the other question is sort of um, you gave that uh, I mean the full range of different sort of percent AMIs, um, you know, from Section Eight up to market rate. And I was wondering, are with that mix, do any of the for sale units like where where would you say they tend to land in that range of AMI? Typically, we. We keep those pretty, uh, we kind of keep them on the workforce and market rate scale, to be honest with you. So that would be 60% and above AMIs. So tailored towards families, families of four making right now in, in Lake County would be about sixty-six, sixty-seven thousand dollars um, $67,000. And as, as far as the, uh, the price of the homes, that would, uh, that would have to come a little bit later, but I, would, I wouldn't imagine they being much more than like three fifty or four hundred thousand dollars, which I I know is a lot even for an affordable um, house, but it's that's just kind of the temperature of the market right now. Okay, thanks. That was that was good for me. Mr. Marcel, any questions? Oh, is Kayla still on here? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, just plugging my computer in. I don't actually have a whole lot of questions um, at this time. Um, I guess really my only question would be what size of parcel would you be looking for in order to engage for development? Great question. Um, we like to see around 10 acres. Uh, we have built um, in a, on as little as seven acres and provided a, 178 units on it. Uh, and that was all multifamily. So uh, 10 acres would be the minimum we would like to entertain, especially if we're trying to get single family on there. Uh, but that, that's, that's our ballpark. Chase, do you all... Um... Have agreements or uh, some some partnerships for materials and whatnot, or uh, to to streamline that a little bit to give y'all a, a good base 
for construction costs and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, actually, um, great question. Uh, I kind of glossed over this, but we do have a uh, whole general contracting arm and an, and an architect architectural design arm as well under LDG. So we do uh, the construction management work for all of our, like if we worked in Leadville, we would pull in local contractors. However, we do have a material contact and we oversee the construction uh, from estimating all the way till turnover. So we do have quite the, um, uh, book of contacts for materials, and especially in the uh, wet Midwest and even su southern, like in Texas region, that would that we'd pull from. And we've actually already hired a um, a gentleman as our regional superintendent for Colorado that has built in Colorado um, a lot. He builds a lot of the uh, built multifamily mainly, and um, so we are we are building out that arm for Colorado as we speak. And do, do the number of units ideally, I suppose is determined in, uh, in part a lot by the- 40 is our, our happy place. What's that? 240. 240, 240 is, our, is our happy place. We, uh, that seems to be, that seems to help our, all of our investors, including um, county, city, uh, and our, and whoever holds our mortgage, yeah. it's, that's, it helps, it helps get those deed restricted units to pencil better. And how long, how long, uh, what kind of phasing is this for construction over what period of time might you anticipate? I suppose that's really a hard answer to question to yeah. answer. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, time, I'll use but... the two, 240, uh, unit complex on, Nine or nine or ten acres, we our construction timelines twenty four months for that. Not include now. I know that in Colorado it will be a little bit different uh, because of building seasons, but we can. A lot of times we won't phase our 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 multifamily products, and we will just start building and we'll complete one building, start lease up after a year, and then we'll finish out the remaining, you know, five, six, seven buildings. So as we're building, folks are moving in um, as quickly as possible. Chase, uh, my next question would be um, <clears throat> around infrastructure. Would there be any kind of expectation for the county to participate on, on cost sharing with infrastructure? Um, installation or or um, have collaboration from those groups or what does that look like and yes in short um, we do take on a lot of that uh, a lot of that burden such as the fees and um, and just building it in general happy we're always happy to do what the community wants uh, and that's now that's typically that's typically the case where there's infrastructure available. Um, this being uh, a new region, I ha we haven't done uh, much kind of utility work and cost feasibility uh, in the area. So it really would depend on what parcel uh, either you have in mind or we could find that would work. Um, so yes, but yes, we would expect some help to, to, be, to be honest. We would come to you and say, look, we do all the back end work figure out how much it's going to cost, what we're going to have to do and say, this is what we can do. Um, if you can help, great. And if you absolutely can't, let's get together. Let's, you know, meeting of the minds. Let's go to the state. Let's get, you know, Julie McCluskey on the phone, see what she can do to, to funnel some infrastructure because there's bonds available. There's dollar money. Um, there's different avenues. But of course, okay. a lot of that does add on to the um, overall development timeline, all those okay. approvals. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Chase, when you say rezoning application, I mean, I, I presume we're talking about a planning development application. I mean, that's that's inherently that is rezoning. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. I just, you know, maybe continuing with the, the just specifying because we know that process. 
Yeah, and and that would be, you know, this board and our planning commissioners, um, of course, but. Um, yeah, and so I, to, I guess the question is, uh, what, what do we have in mind? And you're exactly right. We would, you know, and, and we'd rezone to a PUD, um, we'd put together all that paperwork and submit it to you all. We would be happy to hold um, a community meeting to uh, get more input on it. But ultimately we would use our, we would hire the local contractor that, or I'm sorry, civil that we already have been working with and to develop a site plan to bring to, with you all and the community to, uh, to, to get rezoned and, and hopefully that can be streamlined um, in some way, form or fashion. And Chase, um, dealing with bigger LIHTC, uh, you know, um, or, or funding mechanisms that'll get woven in here. Um, do those conversations happen before? Uh, I mean, those conversations happen after, sorry, I think I'm remembering your, your uh, process there. After that, yeah, applying for yes. LIHTC after rezoning and plans are kind of permitted. Right. So okay. yes, you're exactly right. Chaffa. Now I'm I'm saying Chaffa generally because they are the allocating agency. I but as you all know, a lot, a lot of times the county or town or uh, housing authority can issue a lot of these as well. But as far as Chaffa goes, they want to see a site that's zoned and has plans and it's shovel ready. Yeah. Great. So, so what's our what's our next step? Sorry, I don't. Did, does anybody else have a question? My next question is just what our next steps are with you all. Uh, if take a look at the letter of support, and uh, that will go a long way for us as with Chaffa. We we would already start having conversation with Chaffa, letting them know that we met with you. I mean, not not even site specific. Say, hey, we know that Leadville's a hot area, especially for for you all what you know letting you know we're starting this conversation uh next steps would be uh identifying a site and if you all have a site in mind that you would like us to take a look at i'd be happy to do that and if not i there are i've been i've received a couple um solicitations on some land around the area that would actually that's actually in the county um not in leadville but it's close Okay. So I can, we can walk, we can talk through that at the time, but there is nothing uh, right now that is in effect. So it's just identifying a site. Well, and, and Jace, the, we'll take a le look at that letter of support. I'll also say that, you know, our ongoing conversations with surrounding counties um, hopefully will lead to, you know, partnerships in kind of solving that um, problem collectively. Um, as you mentioned, Rep Representative McCluskey, um, you know, she's she's based out of Summit, and and uh, there's certainly been conversations there of how to how to, you know, think creatively and and partner in big ways um, for a resolution certainly. or a solution. Yeah, certainly that would benefit um, kind of our our tri county area for sure. Um, well, thanks. I, I really appreciate your time today. And, and I'm sure we'll, um, you know, hear f more from you and, and stay in touch with land use staff and um, whatnot. But uh, if we have any questions um, following today, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to send your way or, or through staff and we'll take a look at that letter. But thanks Excellent. for taking the time and having an interest thanks. in the county. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thanks for thank you for having me. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I <laughs> hope I didn't talk too much or or get too uh, in the weeds, but um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Is any parting thoughts before we move on? No, I don't think so. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, totally appreciate it, uh, and I'm I'm really excited about what can be next for our community. You're welcome. Likewise. Great. All right. Well, Thank I will stop so sharing my screen. And uh, 
please let please let me know if I can answer any questions. But uh, I will let Bye. let you all continue with your meeting. Have a great day. Very good. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Okay. And we'll go into item two. And item two, first, we're going to go through our agreement um, with the Southern Colorado Economic Development District. And Michael Hurman is on the line here. Um, I have Michael's scope pulled up somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Um, but this is work uh, that we've been chatting with Michael um, about and it integrates into our next uh, agenda item in the DOLA housing um, grant application. Um, sorry, but first, <laughs> uh, so we have, we have a pending uh, service agreement um, that I think we can definitely make a, a decision on the scope today, pending just the finalization of that um, with legal. And um, over the next several months, as listed here, uh, Michael would aim to be helping the county with the completion of the Lake County Housing Guidelines, assistance with formalizing the structure of regional housing authority as needed, uh, the creation of development strategies for workforce housing, assistance with the DOLA House Bill 22-1271 application, um, the development of public process that meets the DOLA planning grant guidelines to identify identify public sites for housing, cost reformers, entitlement process, and concept designs that can be implemented over the next five years, and uh, begin discussions with county and city staff on how to implement land use code updates from the policy committee. Um, Michael, do you have anything else to add? Well, so uh, let me touch on, you know, we prepared this scope of services um, probably a month ago before we started getting into the planning grant. And so there's a few nuances I want to point out uh, to make sure that we don't somehow skip over county procurement. Pro pro I can't say the word procurement <laughs> policies. Procurement. procurement. Okay. Thank you. Got I it. cannot say it. Uh, <laughs> policies because we're going after dual funding now. Um, and so, so go backing up, you know, this was prepared ahead of, uh, you know, knowing that we were going to go after formal funding from DOLA. And so we now are in this, what I would say, hurry up and wait clause, because it was a, it was kind of a fire drill to get our application, which Anne is going to present here in just a minute, uh, with all the hard work of Anne and Christy to, over the weekend to get that across the finish line for today. Um, but DOLA does have a rule that you cannot spend money before you receive a formal grant reward. And we'll talk about how some of these things like the community guidelines fit well within the, um, mashing of the planning grant. There is one thing on here though, and I think uh, I think this was a, this a good segue to talking about what's not in the planning grant, but something that we should discuss with both the city and the county moving forward. And it is germane to the conversation you just had with the, um, with LGD, right? Or LGBD, or LG, I'm screwing it up. LDG. Um, LDG. <laughs> no. You know, there's, um, and this also applies to the uh, incentives grant. So um, a couple of pieces of clarification. One is, the, we'll start with the incentive grant. That's really the big um, eye on the prize and that grant is due next fall. And that's up to a million dollars that would fund infrastructure. Uh, Jeff, one point of clarification we did get from Dola is that if they were to give a million dollar reward for extension of utilities, that just the utility work would have to be done, not the construction. Uh, and that was like a huge woo, uh, and also made uh, made the potential for Lake County and Leadville to be eligible for that incentive grant uh, much higher, and made me a little bit less scared about uh, trying to produce a project that quickly. Um, secondarily, the piece about looking at um, looking at sites that is considered pre-development and wouldn't be allowed under the planning grant um, or the it could be funded under the incentive grant. My issue with that is that given the timeline and also the discussion you just heard from the previous developer, um, I think there's a parallel path that we should be discussing about doing uh, a, a, a small group um, and ha having it expand into a public process, but bringing on uh, architects and engineers to, 
to really prioritize the top three pieces of real estate that is either public that's publicly owned uh, either by the city or the county and then doing pro formas and concept plans uh, when you start hearing unit counts of 240 from the previous presentation you know obviously those are major major projects and would have large community impacts uh, beyond just the actual site but where they go into roads and so on and so forth uh, and so I did have some high level conversations uh, with some getting some cost estimates on what it would take to bring an architect and engineer in. Uh, and the engineering is about 5,000 a site to really hammer in to know what you're looking at as final costs. Uh, and then it's probably about the same per site uh, to do concept plans. And again, these would not be elevations. These would be site plans and looking at how a site would come together and then how you'd bring infrastructure onto a site. But that would give um, both the city and the county a really good idea of what you would do. And then, the, you know, when you talk about using a public asset, you typically want to do a formal RFQ where an LDG would come in and give you a formal proposal. Uh, and if you're able to put that in with the incentives grant and able to cover, you know, the, the, that grant does require a 20% match. But so for a million dollars, that'd be a $200,000 match from the city and county. I mean, you're able to make a lot of headway on doing a large project relatively quick, quickly if we can get our ducks in order. Um, and so anyways, that is in the here as part of the proposal. What my responsibility would be is to manage the process for the county and the city uh, to put out an RFQ for the architect and engineering services and to make sure that we complete that in the timeline, which is very short, uh, to make sure that we're ready to put to forward a full blown incentive grant uh, proposal. Uh, beyond that, there's some things uh, that we'll get into as far as the grant. And like I said, the community guidelines, as much as I would love to take on that contract, um, I do want to make sure that we follow procurement guidelines if it hits those, those price points and putting forward proposals. Uh, like I said, I, this was put in front of the put together before we knew that the planning grant existed. Um, and so, again, I would be happy to, uh, you know, if I you guys have worked with some great consultants. They're all my peers. If I were to lose the contract with one of them, I would be more than happy to continue to assist the county uh, through those processes uh, because they're so important to the final outcome. So I would say, you know, in general though, uh, there's still a lot of work to do that's under this contract that doesn't fall in the, the DOLA grant. And we'll make sure that we walk that line with DOLA so that we don't do anything that jeopardizes me charging the county for something that could be reimbursed by DOLA or that requires procurement by uh, processes under the county, under the county, if that makes sense. I think so. Sorry, um, rambled there. No, that's okay. Um, do you intend to revise this then or, or I think- I, mean, I, I, cer I certainly can, yep. Uh, okay. you, know, I, you know, I think there's some things in here that we can just take out. Um, but I think, again, overarching, I think you see that a majority of this is still, um, yeah. I, I would say because of the DOLA grant funding, what we had originally discussed was first coming in and doing the guidelines, but because that is eligible under the DOLA grant uh, and we might need to go, the county might need to go out the RFQ, what I would actually suggest is that the first timely thing for me to do is to start working because it wouldn't be covered under DOLA, is starting to put together a proposal for both the city and county to consider funding this design strip process. Christy, I know you have talked about the fact that the coalition could even be willing to be a matching uh, player in that process, depending on how it's structured and ensuring public uh, processes is there for your coalition members. And then also, I know I've uh, talked with Marla about the even Lake County Economic Development um, Corporation being potentially a funder too. So, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of work just right there um, between now and when we hear back from Dola. Uh, and then from there, we can, we can talk about the next steps to make sure that we're following their contract if it's awarded. Perfect. All right. Um, well, that sounds great. And I think with the, those kind of revised details as outlined um, due to the sensitivity of Dola and, and the application that we're submitting, um, which, what is the turnaround that we might hear from them? Do we know? You know, I, um, I would hope that it's fairly quickly. They said the first review is going to happen uh, tomorrow. So oh. they're looking, the first and middle deadline for this planning grant, and that's why was the kind of fire drill was 
today is the application for the first round uh, and they plan to do a review every month. So okay. typically planning grant contracts are fast turnaround. The infrastructure grants take a little bit more paperwork. All right. Okay. Well, I think with, with, that, with those things you outlined, um, I mean, I have comfort um, moving And I'll send a revised scope uh, just focusing on the, the very short term next steps. And then again, we'll, um, I'm happy to do that. Perfect. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Commissioner Fiedler or Marcella, any questions from Michael? No, I don't have any questions. It sounds relatively straightforward, really. Okay. Uh, yeah, same here. All right. Uh, if you don't have any other questions on that scope, um, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner Mudge, before we before we move, I think Christy Golarza has her hand up. Christy, do you have something to add for? Yeah, I just for if, next? yeah, just really quickly, if it's okay, I have a question. Um, Greg Lobby, if you are around, I feel like the city was like urgently needing the community guidelines done. Do you feel like that, that this proposal will meet the city's needs to include deed restriction in phase two for the rail yards? I think we're okay. We had a caveat in there that, that allowed us to now that the community guidelines were not ready yet. Um, you know, we do actually have the deed to that piece of land now. So uh, we're having an LURA meeting um, next week. And at that time, I, I think we're probably going to go out to uh, an, an RFP uh, for development of that property. But what we should have, you know, uh, what we need to get the RFP out there, because it's going to be a while before housing's built. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. I know that was a little bit of a swerve, but since everybody was in the same room, I thought it was um, important to get that question answered. And there's, and Anne's going to get into the budget. There's 22,000 slated to assist with the funding for that in the, in the planning grant. So that's why I would recommend waiting a month to get the assistance. Um, it's a big chunk of what we're looking at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any other, if there's no other question, I'll entertain a motion on the scope and of services um, contingent on, you know, the finalization of the professional service agreement um, fully signed and executed in conjunction with legal. So moved. I didn't, I didn't say approval or a denial though. <laughs> A motion for approval of the scope of services with uh, SCAD uh, and Michael contingent on uh, final final signatures and agreements on, uh, sorry, in conversations with legal um, on the professional services agreement. So moved. Sorry, I did not hear you not. That's say okay. That's okay. <laughs> I don't typically do that. You got to pay it. Um, okay, I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? No, none for me. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for uh, being so thoughtful um, with with revising that scope. I do appreciate it. Yeah, we can yeah, we can uh, definitely no navigate questions that. Or discussion for me. All right. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, all right. Now on to number three, and I guess Ann and and Michael and maybe Christy will tag team a little bit here on that presentation. Uh, what we've got included in our draft of the application for the House Bill 1271. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, um, you know, I want to thank Michael um, and uh, Chrissy for her morning edits this morning as she looked through um, everything, but um, none of this, uh, this quick turnaround and uh, the increase in capacity has been tremendous to be able to bring this to you um, to the board today. So um, I just wanted to do a quick thank you. And just to recap, you know, I think the subject matter, almost everyone that's on this meeting is, is very familiar, but again, this is um, in reference to Colorado House Bill 1271, um, which established these programs offering a state assistance to local governments 
um, to promote the development of innovative um, housing strategies in a manner that's uh, consistent with best land use local practices. Um, and so what we are bringing forth first as um, you know, Michael talked quite a bit about uh, you know, just a few moments ago are the two, the two grants, the planning grant, um, which uh, we ready ourselves to be eligible for the bigger grant in the fall of 2022, the incentive grant, which actually uh, creates the ability to um, start a project, get shovels in the dirt, so um, the planning grant, um, everyone's pretty familiar with, had a menu of options um, of different housing strategies, um, qualifying strategies that we could pick from uh, with needing a minimum of three that we can identify um, to eventually be eligible for uh, the incentive grant. And so through a, a process um, in speaking directly with the board and the city and the housing coalition, uh, all of us working um, in conjunction with one another, we really looked at those menu of options um, specific to our community and, and what the desires of uh, the stakeholders were in, in looking at, at carving out opportunities specific to us. And so let me screen share just real quick here. I know I sent you, I apologize. Um, I sent um, right at the very beginning of the meeting here, I sent everyone the, um, sorry about that, to my just a, um, just going to kind of highlight, Um, can you all see that okay? I can't see anything. Okay. Not yet, yeah. Try again here. Okay. Andy, are you trying to show the staff report? Yeah. Let me see if I want me to help you out. Sure, actually it should be. I can, uh, I can share that. You know, I just wanted to go to the proposal part and then I hopefully I'll have better luck getting to the budget. Um, Is this what you're looking for? It's not, and yours isn't sharing either, Michael. It just says you've started screen sharing, but it's black. Let me try again here. Oh, I can't do it either. Yeah, my screen's now frozen. <laughs> um, let me try one more time. Uh, let me see, Michael can, well, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna. Yeah, my screen's in. frozen. I'll stop him sharing as host, or I'll try. Here we go. All right, try now that. I'm going to try oh, again. Go. I can get it now. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, so at the top of the staff report, we just reiterated some of those uh, different qualifying strategies. And um, are you? Can you see that okay? No. No. Yeah. Are you are you trying to pull up the staff report or the draft? Because I can I don't have the draft, but I do have the staff report. Oh, how funny. It tells me I'm share screening. <laughs> okay. Does anybody I'll, else? Can no, you can't see it? No, I can't see it either. Huh. Okay, I'll stop share. <laughs> oh weird. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just trying to kind of hi highlight um, the proposal. Um, the items of the, the menu of options um, that we thought spoke to. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so if you could just scroll to the second page. Those first bulleted items are just kind of a recap of the menu of option items. 
And then this is um, really kind of pulls out and talks a little bit more. And I think that it's um, LDG's presentation and, and specifically I wrote down their incentive toolbox. I think you'll see that um, a lot of these, that, that presentation was a bit timely um, because we go start going through the things that we identified uh, through, with the help of the board and the city and the housing coalition uh, of, of things that spoke to us and made sense out of those strategies. And so um, as you'll look through there, the first item being um, an update on the disposition of publicly owned property, um, something that we had already be, uh, the board had already been in, in uh, discussion on. Uh, so this aligned nicely with that. The community guidelines uh, for the new regional housing authority, which would include policies for land donation, as we are, uh, the city actually is in communication right now and in negotiations with Climax uh, um, on the parcel um, that potentially may be a, a good housing site. Um, this is this will be a critical first step um, in in going through that land do donation as well as looking at the tax incentive um, that the regional housing authority can bring to the equation. Um, and then just the adoption of a formal uh, policy to leverage publicly owned parcels. Um, next, uh, you know, we've had lots of discussions about um, the fact that we have separate districts for Parkville water and level sanitation and having the technical support to help facilitate those conversations and look at ways and strategies to, to work with infrastructure. Um, and then also, um, you know, some of these items are things that we haven't really dove into too much, like um, fee waivers. Um, however, what we are agreeing to through this is that we're committed to vetting these and the potential of them being relative and um, successful in our community. So also looking at expedited affordable housing applications, moving to the front of the line, uh, potential fee waivers, code amendments, and then the ADU, um, the city um, has been very interested in working through its, AD, its existing code on ADUs and, and making it um, consistent with its dimensional standards, which um, has a little bit of a conflict right now in its code. So these are all um, the strategies and outcomes and where we would be looking to gain capacity and expertise to help us look through um, the lens of, of what works best for our community. And it also um, positions us um, to be eligible for the incentive grant um, because we'll have the ability to check the boxes um, and be able to um, ready ourselves for, for that bigger um, uh, opportunity. So the total budget, and I'm gonna, I'm hoping I can screen share that um, for the the project is that I anticipated at sixty five thousand with the twenty five percent match. Let me try again and see if I can get that this time. It's not gonna, I'm not getting the right. It's just not even giving me the right screen. <laughs> oh, do you want to email it? me and then I can do that. Let me try again here. Let me see if it's going to do it. Um, I might have it. Nope. I'm going to email it to you, Sarah. Okay. Okay, real quick, because it's just, it's not opening the right window for some reason. Apologize for I'll that. just screen share the stack report until I get to pull that up again. Um, and the other thing that while um, we're waiting on that to come through, I would just also, um, I'd logistically, we do, I will need the um, resolution signed and hopefully Patty can uh, help facilitate getting that um, recorded today so that I can go ahead and get that um, uploaded as, as the submission uh, this afternoon that needs to be in before five. So um, also, if there's any way that I can help with the logistics on that, uh, please let me know uh, so that I can do that. Did that come through okay for you, Sarah? Great. Is that uh, showing? Uh, oh, let's see. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. 
So this goes through all of those items that we just spoke about before. Um, and um, with a, Michael um, certainly helped with acquiring these projected costs. Um, it demonstrates the 25% match um, and the, the four different areas that we just recapped um, from the staff report. Um, so if you have any questions on those, I would certainly um, also ask uh, Michael to add some uh, information to them as well as he um, did assist in vetting those numbers. Um, so if there's any questions in any of the financial aspect of, uh, of the budget, um, love to hear those. Or if you have any questions about any aspect of, of the grant, uh, we would love to um, take questions or, or answer anything that we can. The only, the only thing I would add, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, my computer completely crashed when I did that whole share screen, so I'm on my phone now. Um, the only kind of technical piece I think the county commissioners need to be aware of is as the grant is submit, submitted today, since today is the deadline, the county is, uh, per the applicant, is on the hitch for the full um, match of 16,250, so that's 65. However, um, there is anticipated that we will go formally in front of the city council to do a half and half on that. But even if that does come through, the, the luxury of the county taking on that is twofold because it creates less of administrative burden uh, for Ann when she actually does the reporting on the grant in that the, the city would just cut the, the county a check directly. Mm -hmm. Two, it allows the city to potentially budget that for 2022 uh, and you know bring the match over because the grant will go through the fiscal year. Uh, and then three, uh, again, the hope is that your, your burden on the grant match is then reduced by half, if that makes sense. But yeah. as written, DOLA does require the commitment of funds uh, in full by the county. I, I get that. I, I, I don't have any problem with that. And, and we kind of planted the seed beforehand. I know this has been talked about. I think uh, Christy went to city council. I went last week as well um, to let them know that a match request would be would be forthcoming. Um, and also just to add on to there, you know, every every item here um, really does span across city and county um, as we're talking about uh, the different ways that that we need to kind of address that and leverage um, the tools that that we have collectively. So um, I don't have uh, any problem with making that commitment, not knowing the city's uh, dedication. But I will ask my fellow commissioners if there is they have an issue. No, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't and either. And I'll just know, I mean, I think the we've been in really good cooperative discussions with the city and city council, um, you know, and there's more, there's more we'll be doing than just this. So I think we're, yeah. we've got a good partnership going, so. Yeah, I totally agree. Yep. Great. Um, all right. Um, no other questions on the budget. Uh, anything else we need to look at before giving you the thumbs up and going through the resolution for you on uh, that one last item to for submission by the end of the day. Ann or, or Michael? I don't have anything else. I have nothing else either. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Mudge, this is this is Mayor Lobby. I just want to thank the, the county commissioners uh, for being supportive of this. Sure, you're welcome. <laughs> I, this is, yeah, I think we're all I think we're all eager to uh, get the ball rolling and and have uh, have some more traction. So it's very exciting um, to have both Michael on board with Sked and and uh, and these opportunities looking you know in the near future with some funding. But um, all right, well then I will pull up the resolution. Uh, well. I guess I'll, I'll ask my commissioners, um, maybe perhaps we should consider a motion to approve the submission of the application or 
or I guess that is the resolution. Uh, if you want me to read through the resolution. Yeah, if you want to do that, that would be great. All right, I pulled it up. And uh, since everybody seems to be having an issue, um, can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, and, and Patty, which uh, resolution number would this be? Do you know off the top of your head? It would be 20. 20, all right. Thank you. Okay. Um, proceeding of Board of County Commissioners, County of Lake and State of Colorado, Resolution 2120, a resolution supporting the application for a planning grant to the Department of Local Affairs, or DOLA. Whereas the Board of County Commissioners of County of Lake, State of Colorado, is vested with administering the affairs of Lake County, Colorado, pursuant to state statutes, and whereas the board is deeply committed to finding strategies to address the community housing needs, and whereas the Department of Local Affairs is offering grant funding to local governments for assistance in adopting qualifying land use strategies for affordable housing development pursuant to the House Bill 21-1271 here and after planning grant, and whereas the board strongly supports the county's application for the planning grant, thereby increasing capacity and technical expertise to review and adopt policies to support the development of affordable community housing. Now, therefore, be it resolved, section one, the county hereby authorizes application for the planning grant, and if awarded, agrees to serve as the applicant and designated fiscal agent. Section two, if the grant is awarded, the board agrees to receive the grant award monies and authorizes the expenditure of such grant award monies as necessary to meet the term and obligations of the approved grant scope. Section three, this resolution shall become effective upon its adoption. Moved, read, and adopted by the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Lake, State of Colorado at its regular meeting held the 20th day of September, 2021. All right, I will make a motion that we approve resolution 21-20. I'll second. Great. Any further discussion? None from me. Thank you. Uh, none from me. All right. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you so much for all the work on this. This is a uh, very exciting. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very exciting. All right. Let me pull up the. All right. And so we'll move on to item four, uh, which is our tourism panel Miles Media contract. And I will screen share again. Um, hold on a second. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so uh, I received this last week from the tourism panel, and uh, this is an annual a typical subscription for them um, through the Colorado Tourism Office. Um, I do believe, if I'm remembering correctly, that uh, they've actually reduced their uh, subscription or or add placement down to one page, um, which is this contract you see before us. Um, it used to be two. And I believe that the tourism panel has communicated um, recently a desire to really kind of put our dollars locally. And uh, so I think that this is a great, a great step. <laughs> um, but this is basically an annual annual renewal of uh, some of their typical uh, marketing uh, strategies. Are there any questions from the board? No, I don't have anything right now. Uh, no, none for me. Thanks for the background. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, happy to entertain a motion. I will make a motion that we approve the contract with Miles Media, LLC. I'll second. All right, great. Any further discussion? 
No, thank you. None for me. Okay. None for me. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Moving on. Uh, we have item five of resolution for the park replacement fund. Uh, Commissioner Marcella? Um, I actually don't have a copy of that with me. So can we move that to tomorrow as well? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you want to give us a, a brief uh, kind of synopsis? Um, I yeah. think that uh, Amber's, our rec director is, maybe brought this up to all of us, but I'm not quite sure. So just a really quick kind of what we'll be looking at. Put yeah, that absolutely. Tomorrow. Um, so when the when the community park field was built um, back in 2009, there was a recreation uh, uh, park replacement fund um, that was initially set up. And the intent of that fund was to put money in there every budget cycle to uh, pr prepare for the replacement of the turf on the field um, because it's very costly, we know, um, to replace the turf. And so um, what had happened is uh, that fund evolved to include an incorporation of saving money for additional recreational facility repairs that previously had included the aquatic center, um, the, the community park field and other uh, recreational amenities like Huck Finn um, that may need to have upgrades from time to time um, or the tennis courts that need to be resurfaced type of thing. And um, Placer has asked us to take on um, their fund, the, the remaining funding in their organization and the dog park funding that they also hold. Um, so we'll place all of that money into the recreation fund and internally track those uh, quote unquote fund balances for the dog park fund, turf replacement, um, and, and allocate that money appropriately within that fund so that uh, it's saved and spent appropriately. That's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so we'll uh, we'll get that on the agenda for tomorrow, as well as the Nodell and then the landmark survey work. And what's the fourth then? I'm spacing that at the moment, but. Um, uh, it's landmark UP authorization, resolution for authorization of um, purchase, right? Purchase. Yep. Landmark, phase Nota one. Yes. Oh. Sorry, landmark phase one. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. All right, then moving on, we'll go into six, our transit feasibility study contract. Uh, yeah, do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, Sarah? please. Okay, okay, let me, uh... okay, can you see this? Yes. Okay. Um, so we had we had gone out to RFP um, at the beginning of the summer um, for our Lake County Transit Feasibility Study, and this Transit Feasibility Study is uh, funded through a grant um, at CDOT, the Department of Transportation, and then a collaborative match between the city and the county at five thousand dollars each, um, and we awarded the RFP to FAIR and peers for the uh, local transit uh, feasibility study. Um, so this is the contract for that study and it's been vetted by legal and, and we don't have any additional questions on the contract or the um, deliverables. So it's pretty straightforward. We'll begin work as soon as, um, as this contract is accepted and approved. I don't have any other questions. For you, um, or I'll, actually, other than remind me the terms, how how long the work is going to be going on, and when we might so, go work back. Yeah. So um, our grant with CDOT, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is scheduled to um, close June 30, 2022. So we have until until the end of June to complete the, the feasibility work. So we'll do some initial data collection. Um, and re reconvene our local coordinating council, local 
uh, that has local stakeholders and regional stakeholders on it that addresses uh, local and regional transit needs and then start data collection and then data scrubbing. And then from there, they will make a recommendation to us on what our local transit um, operations would look like from there if there is a local need for transit, which I believe there will be. Right, and they'll do cost analysis as well, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yep. Yep. And then our, and then after that, the next, the next step would be to develop a plan um, for implementing any kind of local transit that we would want to want to do, um, and then apply for separate 5311 funding through the Department of Transportation for a local um, transit authority outside of the grant dollars that we already have with Summit Stage. Okay. I don't have any, any other questions. I'm happy to uh, entertain a motion for the approval of the contract with, remind us the recipient. Uh, Fair and Peers. Fair and Peers. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve the contract with Fair and Peers for the local transit feasibility study. I'll second. All right, any further discussion? None for me, thank you. Okay. Uh, none for me. Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 All right, great. Um, and last on our list, uh, we have the joint discussion with the city on ARP requests, considerations, and allocations. Um, I uh, wonder, I think we had some priorities that the board have collected. I wonder, I see the mayor's here, um, if we want to kind of share that list as it's being generated and hear from the mayor on city priorities and then other anticipated asks uh, or consideration for allocation. Does that sound like a good few, few things to put on the table first? <laughs> I think so. All right. Um, well, I think on our uh, our list we had, and I, I know there's a couple missing here, but um, pulling up um, some of my notes, um, we had wildfire planning, fire department, capital, child care, housing, and fleet. Um, anything else or anything to not really include in, in a joint conversation. We've already allocated some for childcare with Bright Start and also the broadband request um, with SCED and the Economic Development Corporation. Correct. So Sarah, can, can you give your list again? Or I, I could share the screen of that spreadsheet that has like yeah. SCED and the broadband. Why don't you do ones. that? That'd be great. I do not have that queued. Because I think is that sharing? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, you listed a couple of things that I don't think were on here, like the fleet stuff. Well, and I don't. I think those were just general priorities. So if those aren't our P priorities, then I've, let's not let's not include them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and yeah, there. I think there are things we were interested in doing. I, I don't think we. Yeah, I just hadn't made it onto this ARP spreadsheet yet. Um, and I'll say yeah. So I think, as you said, the broadband here on line twenty-two and the daycare on sixteen, we've committed. Um, and then these up here for housing were just you know kind of initial. Uh, contemplation, just trying to map out where we're at. Okay. Mayor, what, um, what city priorities, kind of high level topics? Well, let's back up a little have? bit. I would, I would uh, suggest uh, that, that the city share 
in the the Bright Start uh, child care uh, costs. I know you've committed to it, but it you know you know I feel like some of these things are important both to city and county, and that we should share in that cost. So uh, let's keep that in mind in terms of of how you view your overall budget of ARPA funds, and uh, and it may make both of our funds work better if, when it's appropriate, we share in that funding. Uh, Mayor, what what kind of sharing would you propose with that Bright Star funding? Well, uh, I'm going to I'm going to start with with the with the the uh, proposal that we if, if we have a project that we both value and we're using ARPA funds that we do it as a proportional proportional share of what we've received overall. And uh, the calculation I had was thirty. 32.3% would be the city's share. And so uh, that would be 60, 67.7% uh, for the county. That, that, that would be uh, my suggestion. Okay. okay. Now the city has only received a couple of proposals. We did receive that proposal from uh, from Bright Start, and you guys acted on it very quickly. So thank you. Um, but we we would love to to help with that. Um, we have also received um, something from from C4, where and I didn't even realize it during COVID. They were really very instrumental in working on not just energy issues but utility issues. Uh, where they've they've spent over forty four thousand dollars during COVID um, to help make that happen. Now um, they would have to. I mean, that's that's just uh, an email I have from them talking about you know what they've done and what they've spent. I think we would have to ask them for a proposal in terms of of the ARPA funds uh, because what we know is you can't pay for things that have already been spent, if, if my understanding is correct. So mm -hmm. they would have to make a proposal going into the future in terms of their need. Uh, the, the other I've received is from the center and it's a very modest proposal and they're just looking for uh, some retention bonuses uh, for their employees. And, and as we know, <laughs> uh, in, Keeping you know employees right now is a really tricky proposition, especially in any childcare. Yeah, um, I'm wondering too. I know that the Child Care Coalition has also approached us or sent us a letter, and I don't know if they've sent the city one as well. Yes, but it it was it wasn't an actual proposal. It was more general in scope, if I remember correctly, about you know what 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 they're thinking about and some, some numbers. Is that, are we thinking about the same one? Maybe I haven't seen it. Um, I think so. As an example, in their letter, they had, uh, they were showing $150,000 for Bright Start, but then Bright Start actually gave us a proposal for 204,000. So they weren't really. Uh, yeah, but I, I kind of had a question on what, since we've really given that or dedicated that to the childcare providers, I would I wonder what the request is from the coalition. I think we can ask Han. I can ask Hannah um, to come to us with a more detailed proposal if you'd like, or send us a more detailed proposal. Yeah, one of yeah. them was for get outdoors Leadville. Um, you know, one was, I believe, for, uh, uh, you know, after school programming, Project Dream. You know, they, they were just, they were really presenting ideas, but I, I would agree with uh, Mr. Marcella. Each of those organizations needs to come to us with a proposal. Yeah, are we asking them for a proposal or are we saying if you, if you need to ask us for money? I, I guess my question about the coalition is if they need to ask us for money or they were pushing to make a request on behalf of Bright Start, 
And with goals, recent funding, I just, I don't, I mean. I don't know. The, if, the, if, they, if they want to ask for money, it needs, yes, I agree. <laughs> Generally, it needs to be a detailed uh, yeah, I mean, specific right. request. They, they should they should be coming to us and proposing what they need money for. Does it fit under the ARP uh, guidelines for funding? And then, you know, what can we or what are we willing to do? And then the secondary issue, as I brought up last time, is, you know, are, are there proposals that, that resonate well with the city and county? In which case, can we share in those costs? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't know that we've, I'm kind of thinking housing really covers a lot of those, some of those parts and pieces and satellite like programs and projects that are going on. Um, other than, I mean, I, I you know, we're looking for other kind of funding for like wildfire mitigation. I don't know if we, I had not anticipated putting that on the list for ARP funds. Um, and, you know, we, the, as a board, we haven't necessarily decided if we think we might want to retain some portion of the funding um, so that we don't um, spend everything. Over the next I don't year. think it, it's not my impression, at least the what I've seen so far, is the requests are not so great that we would deplete all the funding. You know, I don't even know, based on what I've seen, if we'd even touch a fourth of it right this second. But that's just what I've seen. You have some bigger ticket items on here. And you said something about fire department capital, and I wasn't not sure what you're talking about there. Well, again, I think I might have been mixing up a couple of different priority lists as far as like bigger capital acquisition or big um, ticket dollars. Um, but I think as far as that goes, generally speaking, our our thought process or one layer of our thought process on um, projects and programs is just, you know, putting away some of those dollars for that capital acquisition fund and planning on a five or 10 year replacement fund um, so that we don't get into kind of a, a, a dire situation of really not having had the funds okay. build, building up. But we've, all, I mean, we've all talked about that together, I think. I think it's a great idea. We, we have a pretty good solid <laughs> um, replacement uh, matrix uh, to look at it, it. Of course, it's always scary to look at those things, especially with something uh, as big as the fire department budget um, and uh, the fire management board. You know, we could be looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in in replacement uh, mm -hmm. costs. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, and I think that that's the kind of thing that at least Sarah, what, what you were saying, stuck in my head is just. The idea of trying to not that we would spend that each year, but just that we would keep trying to build up that fund so that we don't, you know, get hit with a large, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar, you know, whether it's a fire engine or another fleet piece of equipment or, you know, repairs to buildings, just, you know, being able to keep up with fund balances in the right places so that we're, we're building up those year on year costs and, and Greg, you're exactly right. I mean, with the fire management board. That was, you know, really appreciate the work that Chief Daly's done, sort of keeping that spreadsheet up to date of where we are with every piece of equipment and sort of keeping on track of what it'll cost. And yeah, so, and I think back to ARP, I'm not, you know, some of those things probably aren't ARP eligible, but just, you know, thinking about big ticket items. You know, I'm gonna digress this a little bit in terms of wildfire planning. Um, were you aware that uh, the Joint Budget Committee is going to be here, I think on October 6th, uh, to speak with our fire department? No, I did. 
I just got an email from Dan this morning and I, I shared a calendar invite, but it was not, it was without any context or explanation. Yeah. And I and well, I don't know that I have a ton more to share than that. <laughs> I don't um, think I do either, except for the only reason I can imagine, and, and I, you know, I could be I could be letting my imagination run wild, uh, is they have to be here wanting to learn about wildfire mitigation. Uh, you know, so. And yeah, and the C and CMC's, I think, development of the academy and how that integrates in, you know, kind of benefits for us as a rural small community. Um, yeah, that's, I, I share in that guess, Mayor, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, is, is that, like is infrastructure protection an eligible expense? I, I haven't even gone as far as to vet that. I have not seen that in COVID. In infrastructure <laughs> for affordable housing is, is an eligible expense. Um, in terms of infrastructure for wildfire, um, I don't remember seeing anything in there about that. But we oh, could, yeah. uh, I don't either. I don't remember seeing anything explicit about that, Commissioner Mudge, in any of the guidance that I've seen. Yeah. But I do think we should lead on the Joint Budget Committee uh, because if, if it's not, not clear to everybody by now that we have a huge wildfire issue in Colorado after last season, um, you know, it, it, well, I, I guess we can count our blessings. We're not Northern California. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but we could be in the future. Uh, if, if we don't do what, what we need to do now. Yeah. So I, I have a, it's not exactly a proposal. It's more like a thought as usual. Uh, I don't think we, we have, we, I don't think we have enough people who have come to us with proposals to sit down and vet them and look at them and say, okay, let's prioritize or, or here's where we want to spend money and here's where we don't want to spend money. Um, and I just can't tell how, for instance, the center, their, their request of $18,500, that may feel more imminent. Uh, and maybe that's one that we'll let the city deal with and then talk about sharing those costs after the fact, similar to what you did with Bright Start, if you think that's, that's an okay approach. Um, I don't want to put off people who, who need the money uh, in the short term uh, to accomplish what we all want them to accomplish. Um, but I also don't want to just start throwing money at these organizations without a plan. So I guess, I guess my suggestion is <laughs> let's, uh, let's tell people if you, if you want to participate, please get us a proposal. And then once we have some proposals, maybe the four of us can sit down and go through them and make some decisions, just a, just a work session. I don't think it's gonna take a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that sounds like a reasonable approach. And uh, again, I think kind of inherently we've agreed on that similar approach with all things affordable housing. Um, we've kind of, that's, that's, we've developed our conversations into that kind of system. Um, so I, I feel comfortable with that. Okay, with your Commissioner permission, Marcella. I'll reach out. I'll reach out to Hannah and tell her, you know, for their coalition, you know, they they have a number of people in their coalition who are who are have thrown out some ideas, but uh, let her know. Then we need to see proposals. And I and I think too, like on, um, you know, like thinking about coalition work and developing. Um, either that case or, or programming, if there's, if there's new programming, yeah, that I think we need to understand about that. And if there's past efforts that just haven't really been, haven't gained a lot of traction, um, you know, maybe that's a place where we do some more development of that project or idea and then kind of save ARP funding for the implementation of those things. Um, just, just, and maybe that's through the coalitions or maybe, maybe not. And, and I'm not necessarily inviting like a thousand new 
totally a new project because we got a lot on the plate with the housing stuff. But um, yeah, I think it, I don't know, it, it should be okay. thoughtful and integrated into some of the bigger like, I mean, strategies and priorities. Yeah, I, I get that because I was really quite, fr I was shocked that C4 had been doing the, this program and really I had never even heard of it. I didn't know they were doing it. It was, it was, it was really a surprise to me. Uh, and I don't know that it, there may be other organizations that have been really involved in COVID issues that, that we, I, I can't imagine that there are, but, but I was surprised by C4. Commissioner, is any any thoughts or other conver things you want to hit on? Um, I don't, I don't really think so. And I, I think, uh, I think to kind of add to Mayor Lobby's point, um, you know, I think it's, it's important for us to encourage people that may have been helpful through the pandemic to come to us with a proposal of like, hey, we've um, expended all of our resources through the pandemic to assist our community. And here's what, it, what it would mean to us to have some of this funding, but then also for us to look at what we might feel may be necessary to assist with economic recovery and, and improvement in our community and really try to place those dollars where they might have the biggest overall lasting impact, you know? Um, and so I'm thinking about particularly um, partnerships with, with things like Parkville Water and Leadville Sand um, to, to get some of the ball rolling on some of that infra infrastructure investment to, to get things like housing ready to go, um, or, or, you know, looking for setting up some emergency housing, like maybe buying, um, a home or a duplex that we could use in, in emergent situations, um, I, I think just some of those things are, are things that we might want to make a decision um, together with potentially city council so that our priorities somewhat match. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't think we have anything quite organized in that in some of those new thoughts, but as they come, let's kind of keep in mind to schedule those work sessions. Mayor, would it be helpful if we, I mean, I think it's always helpful if we try to make an evening meeting with you and council. Um, uh, yeah, that, but, but I, as you said, we need more information right now. Yeah. I, I don't feel like we're in a position to, to really make much in the way of decisions. At this point, you you may be in terms of some other of your of your priorities but, uh, in terms of these kind of nonprofits who have been COVID related, and and certainly childcare is one of those. Um, I I just I just would I'd love to see some proposals and something to to really wrap my mind around what they're asking for. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that I have anything else. The, Any other burning questions? Go ahead, Commissioner Fieser. I mean, just, just the one other thing, again, we're, I mean, we're not quite ready for it, but just to sort of put on everyone, I mean, especially with the, with the mayor and city is, you know, if we are going to move ahead with some of the temporary holding cells to backfill the lack of a jail mm. um, until the Justice okay. Center, I think we were exploring whether that was a potential use of, um, of ARP funds. That's a great, great one to bring up. I, I think also to just be um, remembering that the residential assessment rate will be lowered through legislative action in 2022 as well. So there may be um, an opportunity for us where we may need to use that as supplemental um, revenue for revenue loss in 2022, um, but I, I'm not sure how, how much that will affect us at this point. I think it's a little early to tell, but uh, potentially with, 
with some calcul calculations, we might be able to figure that out pretty easily. Okay. Well, I think, uh, I guess our next, well, we can, we can keep our, each other apprised. I, I don't have any other new uh, uh, requests and mayor, if you wanna reach out to those groups and share our thoughts, that'd be great. And then I suppose we can join um, next city council meeting on the house bill question and, and talk a little bit more about, are we at a place to talk a little bit more about the housing director position? Is that also something that we would share? I with think the that ARP funding? I have to tell you that, I mean, you know, I, 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 uh, I've, I've sent out some parameters to the city attorney to get us an idea. Uh, in the meantime, I'm kind of holding my breath because I felt like the, uh, the proposal that's going to be on the ballot in November was one of our funding mechanisms for that position. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I, that's an assumption on my part, uh, but that seems, it seems like a, a good way to get that position in place is, is to have that revenue. Okay. Christy, do you have a question? I was just going to mention, I feel like that I recall from that meeting, the last joint work session that we had with the OCC city council, where you guys decided to pursue that position that you, I had heard the room say in consensus that they would not want to wait to see how the ballot measure shook out um, before pursuing that. Well, I think we're talking about, I think we're dedicated to funding that. We're just talking about exactly where that gets allocated from. So I, I don't think that's the mayor's. Okay, I sorry, I had that, interpreted well, it wrong. I, I, I think I was suggesting that, but I, <laughs> I might've been, I might've been wrong, uh, you know, so, uh, but I, I do agree that we should commit to it either way. It's similar to what we're doing right now with, with the city administrator. We're committed to it either way. We're hoping Dola comes through for us as they did for you, uh, but, but you know, we're not necessarily, we're not hinging that position on, yeah. on Dola's uh, uh, granting of our, our request. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank right. you guys for the, for the conversation. I will, uh, I'll shoot off a note to Hannah um, this afternoon and just let her know we, we'd like, uh, you know, some proposals from interested parties. Um, no, no promises, uh, but we need some information. Okay. Very All good. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you guys very much. Um, Commissioner, is there anything else on that before we just move into our one last housekeeping item of bills and payroll? I don't know. I was good. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. Okay, uh, and that's it for our new business. And last on the list, as I said, we have housekeeping item um, for approval of our bills and payroll for pay period ending September 10th, 2021. I'm sorry, did you say that you're, you are? <laughs> I did not. I'll entertain a motion for the approval of uh, bills and payroll for pay period ending September 10th, 2021. So moved. Uh, second. All right, any further discussion? No, know. thank you. Not for me. All right, hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Great, okay. Um, great. Well, I'll circle back with uh, Michael on uh, that scope of work and come in to sign those docs to get those recorded for their for them pushing those out. And uh, I think that wraps up the meeting. Wonderful. All right. All right. At three o three, we will adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you so much.